what we want to do now is we've been solving some linear equations, but we want to change that and do what we call solve quadratic equations. Now, a quadratic equation is one where we have an x squared in there. So it might be something like y is equal to x squared or y is equal to 4x squared, something like that. And we want to find values of x given values of y. So we, we're going to, we want to solve those ones. Again, that's what it, so if we want to look at gen, definition of a quadratic equation, it would technically be this, ax squared plus bx plus c. So it could be any of those, where x can be any number there, a, b, and c uh, can be any number as well. Uh, the only thing is a cannot be equal to zero. So if you want to look at your definition of a quadratic equation, that would be it. And the, the, gra the resulting graph would be a parabola. So, but we don't want to go that hard this yet. We will later on. We will solve ones that look like that and be in that form, but we have to do a lot more work with our algebra first to solve those ones. Um, what we want to do is just solve simple ones today. So the first one we're going to look at is if I've got x squared and it's equal to 4. And really we can think about what this might be. And you want to face something like this with uh, doing Pythagoras' theorem uh, in year 8. So this one shouldn't be too hard, but there is a little bit of a trick. If x squared could equal to 4, what could x be equal to? Well, the simple one would be, well, x could be equal to 2. Well, you know, 2 squared is equal to 4. But there's a little bit of a trick here. Because it's x squared, we could also take the answer to be minus 2. Because if we took minus 2 all squared, then that answer would be 4 as well. So 2 squared is 4, but also minus 2 squared is equal to 4. And here's our little trick there. So we're going to get two solutions. It's x squared, so we can get two solutions when we have an x squared. And in this case, we're going to get x equal to 2 or minus 2. So let's have a look at another example. If x squared would be equal to uh, 9. So again, what could x be equal to? If we took the square root of x, we get x. But if we take the square root of 9 there, what we want to do is because we could have positive or negative, we're going to take the square, positive or negative square root of 9, which would give us x is equal to uh, positive, positive or negative 3. And we could test it. We go through all 3 squared is 9, and minus 3 all squared would be 9 as well, because minus 3 times minus 3 is equal to 9. So that's what we're looking at when we, we solve a quadratic equation. So we could do that with any numbers there. So uh, x squared is equal to 225. So x could be equal to plus or minus, because we can have two answers, and a square root of 225 there. Uh, so x would be equal to... Uh, plus or minus 15. So that would be our answer there because the square root of 225 is 15. Check that on your calculator. If you get nasty numbers, you can put them into the calculator. That's not a problem. They don't have to be nice whole numbers there. Um, now, one that looks a little bit different. Now, if we took something like this, 4x squared equal to 9. What would x squared be here? Well, again, like we've been doing with our other equations, our aim is to get x by itself. So if we get x squared there by itself, how would we do that? We would divide by 4 on both sides. And this would give us 9 on 4. Now, again, we could throw this in the calculator, but I prefer to do it without the calculator because I could say the square root of 9 over 4, and well, I can take the square root of 9 and then the square root of 4. Square root of 9 would be 3 and the square root of 4 would be 2. And again, we can test this by taking positive 3 on 2 and put it into our equation, and negative 3 on 2, put it into and square it, and times it by 4, it would give us 9 there. So that's where that's, that's as hard as we really want to do our quadratic equations at this present time. Now, you might be wondering, you might be thinking, well, wait on, when I did Pythagoras' theorem last year, I got to a situation where I got down to x squared is equal to 16, and so x would only be equal to 4. Well, with Pythagoras' theorem, you're actually working with the distance of a, a triangle. So you might have had that being 5 and that being 3, and you're solving there for x. So, and you got down to that equation. But when you're finding this, the distance of a side, well, our distance is always positive. We're never getting a negative distance there. So what we, we are still solving a quadratic equation, but because it has a context... 
of being a side of an equation, we actually ignored the negative value. We could have taken a negative, but we had to ignore it because we can't get a negative value there. So sometimes you'll solve quadratic equations and some of the solutions won't work because they're not valid because they might give you a negative value. And that's okay. That will, that will be okay. It depends on the uh, nature of the problem and the context in which it's in. So taking the square root of both sides, making sure we take the positive and negative because we could have two values depending on the problem.